Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, you read the title correctly, assuming of course you can read it at least a second grade level. Then again, if you can, you probably wouldn't even be here in the first place. My first ever gallery of my own work was going live soon and I was both nervous and excited and groggy. There was a lot going on with my body that day and it may not be related, but whatever. Anyway, the gallery would feature a lot of my work from the past few years. Some of it, you know, documented on this very channel and some of it not. So I was in the middle of packing up my M6 to ship my ass over to the opening of it. After all, what cameras do you bring to a like a gallery, right? All right. It has been a whirlwind, whirlwind around here the past couple of days. I'm only bringing two rolls of film, two rolls of ectochrome. Is that a dumb move? It might be. We'll see. Because I'm only bringing two rolls of ectochrome and it's 100 ISO, I don't think I'm going to ask for a hand check, which may f me. Flight doesn't leave till 6 today. I don't really want to pack. I'm doing it anyway. I'm strong. I have to give a 45 minute presentation. The first time I practiced it, I thought it went pretty well, but it was only 23 minutes long, so that's not good. I need to get those numbers up. I guess I could fake a few sneezes, a few coughs, or some dramatic timing, drinks of water, and it'll get to 45 minutes. I'm not looking forward to that. I don't really like presenting. I should stop delaying the inevitable and just finish packing. Blech. All right, see you at the airport. This whole gallery was about a year and, you know, 7 billion emails in the making. I was approached about it when I was in Germany last year and it was the coolest thing ever. I've been to a ton of artist galleries over the years, but never really one of my own. So I finally felt like a big boy for once. Anyway, at the airport, I met up with my best friend, alcohol. Just kidding, no. Caleb, actually, who would be joining me for this trip overseas. Overseas don't work. <laughs> That's right, this gallery would be at the Leica store in Nuremberg, Germany, a place that neither of us had ever been before. And it was super cool to me that I got to go with Caleb, the guy who basically peer pressured me into beginning film photography in the first place and, you know, ruined my life. This zooms in far. Yeah, you're really close. <laughs> like, this close on my nose. <laughs> Anyway, after instinctively grabbing the no grab sign, we were off to the other side of the world and had to once again restrain ourselves from taking pictures during magic hour. Unless of course we wanted the usual airplane window on film shot that's been done literally to death by everyone, including me. Obviously we made it to Nuremberg safe and sound and settled in for the week ahead and totally absolutely did not have Traveler's Giardia already. I don't know why you'd even ask. There would be gallery openings, workshops, and seminars that I'd be taking part of, so it was crucial for me to get accustomed to the time zone. Olivia and Corey are two names that you should know. If the Leica store in Nuremberg was a pirate ship, because swashbuckling metaphors make everything easier, because I think we're getting kind of dumber, Olivia would be the helmswoman, you know, plotting the course and making it all happen. She was who I coordinated with for the past six months or so. Absolutely none of this would have been possible without her. Corey works for the analog store over there, and upon arrival, he gifted us with some Glenn fittage, so it turns out he's an alright guy in our books. Anyway, after turning the hotel room into basically a dump because we couldn't sleep, I grabbed my LightPix Labs flash and began fine tuning some sh I've never really shot flash photography before, at least not very successfully, so I wanted to dial in the settings and luckily Caleb was there who did a video breaking down flash settings for film photography featuring this super hot piece of ass. We're at 400 ISO and you're saying F11. Okay, you're about three feet away. Yeah, that looks good to me. Uh, so let's make it a stop brighter. Oh, f you're gonna be blind by the end of this. <laughs> The math checks out. Hey, you look like you're about to sh your pants in on this one. <laughs> Looks like a shining kind of. 
So with artificial stimulants literally propping us upright like weekend at Bernie's, I loaded up some Actachrome in my Leica M6 and slapped this chunky ass beast of a lens on it. Basically, when I shoot Actachrome, I shoot it through a dense warming filter that takes away about a stop of light. And E100 is not exactly an accelerant of a film stock, at least for ISO. Only an accelerant of a lot of money out of your bank account. Anyway, so I thought I'd counter that by purchasing a fast lens. That lens being the Voigtlander 50mm f1. And yeah, it's a pretty meaty one. After that, we decided to hunt down some bangers on the streets, like the Wolves from Wolf of Wall Street or something. I don't know, I never saw that movie, but I guess there's probably wolves in it. I wouldn't really say I got anything good yet, but I was definitely inching closer. Sorry, millimetering closer, I guess. I forgot where I am. We made our way around the streets towards the castle that more or less overlooks the city. The light was, you know, midday. It is what it is, so I elected to shoot black and white because that shit always slaps. This guy's seen some shit. Holy crap. <laughs> anyway, we don't really have castles in America. I mean, I guess the closest thing would be like a white castle, but we thought it was super cool anyway and very different than what we usually shoot, so we were on board. This castle was built in the 1200s, I guess, sometime. Probably a much more entertaining time because, you know, no internet and like swords everywhere, probably. You know it's serious when the sunglasses come off. There's no advance. Doesn't make sense. Uh-oh, what's Jason doing? This shot is actually good. I mean, it would be better if I had a wider lens to capture the horizon in frame as well, but 35mm was all that I was working with at the moment. Truth be told, I was practicing this technique I use pretty often where I kind of like find the composition that I want and then wait around patiently for something interesting to happen. Anyway, after doing virtually nothing for like an hour and having no excuse for being tired, we were yet again exhausted anyway and could only be revived through beer. Okay, the lighting is looking pretty good. So I think, uh, okay, it doesn't look good there. I think I'm gonna shoot some color. Piping hot bangers! Color or no color? What's it gonna be? Monochrome. No, I'm shooting color. <laughs> Picked up a bitch of a lens, we once again hit the streets of Nuremberg and found some friends to have beer with on the side of the road underneath the castle. I don't know, I guess that's just a thing they do there. Next morning I was up semi early and kept working on this presentation or that presentation, but I always found time to, you know, sneak out and grab coffee with my M6. I like the colors and I guess the action of it. As we headed to the Leica store, I shot what I thought was gonna be a career defining shot outside of this like coffee shop. Like I sh you not, I was definitely prepared to hang up my camera and finally call it after this. 
this toddler like got free from their parents and bolted straight down the sidewalk like an inmate fleeing the prison guards and I had less than a split second to take the photo. Didn't meet her, didn't nothing. I just crossed my fingers hoping the color of the coffee shop would pop and the subject would be awesome. I guess the shot ended up okay. It's definitely very overexposed and I tried to, you know, pull it back as much as it would go, but Ektachrome, like the universe, isn't very forgiving. Still an interesting photo though. Anyway, it was time to see the gallery in person for the first time and just like a mullet, the party was definitely in the back. It was very strange seeing all that work up. A mixture of 8x10, 4x5 medium format, and 35 mil work that I produced over the span of like several years just collecting images of, I guess, derelict buildings and environments throughout the Southern California desert and beyond. And while I was definitely tempted to do a toilet photography gallery instead, I just didn't really feel like the world was ready yet for my magnum opus. At the end of the day, I think about 100 photos were submitted and then something like 40 images were narrowed down to be split between the Leica store, the Fuji store, and the analog store. It was kind of an interesting process because I often times feel, you know, too close to the work, I guess, and can't really objectively decide what's good, much less what works well together. So it became this like highly collaborative process between Olivia and I within a preset selection of work. The red scale shots blown up to that size were also just absolutely incredible. They were taken on 645 if I remember correctly, so that detail was uh, definitely very cool to look at. I don't know if I'd ever do another gallery with this, you know, specific theme, so if you want to see it in person, you have until, I think it was December 7th, I believe, and who knows who might be coming back to make an appearance on December 6th for the closing. Of course, there is also an aerochrome room that deviates a little bit from the theme, but whatever, who gives a shit? And I probably ran the printer's red ink supply absolutely dry. Yeah, I'll show you some work that uh, has not been in a video or online yet. Oh, please, no photography. <laughs> <laughs> that evening was time for the workshop where I let slip some of my darkest, most hidden photography secrets that I've learned over the years. I'll spare you the most of it because I'm actually not very good at presenting and was nervous sweating like a goddamn super soaker, but here's some wisdom anyway. Uh, where I've been published, nowhere. After that was the official gallery opening night. So huge thank you to everyone who traveled far and wide, showed up, piled in, and invariably clogged the street outside the Leica store. That was super cool. Uh, I'll keep it really short. Just thank you all for being here. This is the first time I've ever had a gallery, so it's very special. Big thank you to Olivia for all the work she's done. Big thank you to the entire Leica team and Fuji team and everything. You guys are fantastic. Thank you all for being here. Let's get drunk. <laughs> Thanks for all the gifts too. Among them were many bottles of alcohol, rolls of film, a heavy ass legitimate deputies badge from Flagstaff, and of course the rarest of jewels, this thing. That morning it was time to move hotels, but first we hit the streets with some world-renowned photographers in some bland light to find some meaning to it all. Unfortunately, we never found it, but the photos are pretty solid. Not this one though. That corny shit has been done a million times, but like, this one isn't terrible. He basically just wants to be Emma. <laughs> he wants to be Emma, that's all. It's She's cool. a superstar, man. Well, it was the dad here. grip. I feel like a, a dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's really light, too, isn't it? It is, it is. Guess Caleb and I are sharing a bed tonight. And probably tomorrow, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
After realizing that I'd be forced to share a bed with a married man that evening, free Red Bull watermelon. I understood what had to be done, that I would need several hundred thousand beers. That night was the separate uh, Fuji gallery opening of which some of my Fuji TX1 panoramic work would be featured and it was quite a nice event overall. So that's Siergen, a party animal with the wisdom of an old man. He was in charge of coordinating everything for the Fuji store and he did an absolutely amazing job. I couldn't really go absolutely hog wild that night because I had a presentation the next morning, the big one actually, the one I've been kind of sweating profusely about because it was a presentation about photography to other photographers. And in all my years of shooting, I always felt like I was learning and absorbing rather than, I guess, compiling anything worth teaching. What's the passcode on this? <clears throat> Butthole? <laughs> so I can go well. <laughs> I think it will be fine. I think it will go well. Anyway, that was the morning it was time to face the music. Actually, there was no music and no laughter because I'm a talentless hack. Today's presentation is about format or medium. The presentation was ultimately about format, including, you know, digital or film, and of course, sensor size, and why it's more important than you probably think. Oh, and for sure, if it's putting you to sleep right now, imagine being in that room with literally everyone falling asleep. Thank you. It was definitely a mixture of overall exhaustion, but also relief that the presentation was, I guess, behind me that evening as we hit up the Leica and Fuji gang to go out and party, hopefully party hard enough to finally reset our internal jet-lagged ass clocks. It was an overall pretty fun night from the little that I remember. Movement was definitely very limited that day. Huh? Eventually we did get our collective sh together and were resurrected through the power of kebab. And suddenly our photo mojo was returning to us. After all, pain creates art or something like that. Anyway, inspired by the kebab, my layering and my photography was totally dripping in sauce that evening. This is a good start, but this one is definitely where it's at. A street corner, beautifully lit with the shadows of uh, two people walking into frame, like it's high noon in some old ass western that your dad fell asleep to. shot is whatever it's just a building facade but you can make out the reflection of two people in the window which is a really nice detail i like it a lot and finally one of my favorites for the story it tells in frame this one might have worked well in color as well but i was kind of up its creek without a paddle i didn't have color on me good depth good tones i mean what are you gonna do about it After running into the legendary street photographer, Samuel, whose last name I won't even try and pronounce, we were inspired even further and returned to the room so I can grab some color in my M6. As we headed forth to Firth, I think is how it's pronounced. We had uh, partied there the previous night and the town was, you know, still recovering from the damage we left behind, but made a mental note that it would be cool to come back and shoot at sunset. So that was what we were there to do. That's the, uh deal of the century right there. With my chunky ass lens impressing literally everyone that walked by, we shot gorgeous evening light hitting the sides of buildings and that's just great. In 
you know, classic Jason form. I gotta say, I could have done these better. This one's okay. It's probably the best of the set that evening. This shot is good in like a, that building is definitely haunted kind of way. That night we actually went out for some night photography around town just to kind of mix things up a little bit. Everything kind of shuts down semi early in Nuremberg on the weekdays at least. So the streets were pretty empty, which made the photography good. Those are gross. I like them. Actually like this photo a lot all the broken shit on the ground hints at some sort of like past violent action in this you know stagnant empty space and I think that dichotomy is quite nice anyway here's more broken shit. The next morning we got our asses over again to Firth to visit the analog store that also featured some work from this guy that I don't really particularly like. After that, we hopped in a car and were taken to the one and only world headquarters for Adidas. I elected to shoot black and white of the massive and architecturally stunning campus where the magic happens. Super special thanks to both Otto and Philip for taking time out of their day and giving us the opportunity to see this, you know, incredible place. It was humongous. And Siergen and I were absolutely crapping our pants in excitement. <laughs> After admiring our M6s for a little bit, Siergen and I hit the court to show everyone there how it's done in Wimbledon. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone in the offices behind us stopped working and crowded to the windows to witness history being made between two legends on the court. <laughs> Anyway, staring deep into Patrick Starr's ass crack, I loaded up some more Actichrome and decided to hit the streets for some, you know, good lighting. This shot is cool, but this shot I think is a little bit better because of the humans in frame and a little bit more of that like blue sky color detail. But overall this photo feels like it's missing something of which I'm not quite sure. But speaking of missing, you don't want to miss out on the deal of the century with today's sponsor, Squarespace. You've probably heard of the industry leading Squarespace before, but did you know that it features even more modern day tools to help you build a website in virtually no time at all? Tools like Design Intelligence, which utilize groundbreaking artificial intelligence to not only perfect, but personalize your new website down to every last detail. If it's products you're looking to sell, like prints of photographic work, you can now use AI to power things like product and video descriptions, as well as email campaigns. It's designed to ultimately take some of the load off when crafting your new website workspace to allocate 
other resources like time and critical thinking to other more important components of your online presence. And on the topic of selling products, Squarespace even features preset payment infrastructures to start the inflow of economy to you in exchange for goods or services. If you've ever dreamed of making profit from your photography through print sales, photo books, etc., Squarespace has you covered with many different payment methods such as Klarna, Direct Debit, Apple Pay, Afterpay, and even ClearPay. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. If you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, that's about the end of it, really. It was such a fun time with some really outstanding people and I wouldn't trade the experience for anything. I wouldn't really say my German is getting better because it's still mostly non-existent, but I did get a lot of shots that I don't think are, you know, absolute shisa. The color stuff was a bit hit or miss for me. I wouldn't say that there's like a ton of color to photograph in Nuremberg overall, but when it worked, it worked. I think the highlights were definitely this shot and this shot with the prison break toddler shot being like a honorable mention. Black and white was the formidable champion here as it you know, usually always is. So many of these shots are portfolio worthy and I'll need to reflect on them quite a bit, which is gonna be hard and give me a headache, but that's my problem, not yours. This shot is great from like a lighting and 3D perspective angle, but the night stuff was just absolutely killer to me as well. This shot being really the pinnacle for me, something I wouldn't normally shoot, I guess, but you know, it regardless turned out great. I certainly learned a lot from the process of selecting images and setting up a gallery. This won't be my last gallery ever, you know, unless of course I spontaneously explode tomorrow or something. I more or less look at this gallery as a very successful beginning. A lot of the work presented was work I shot in the years. I was trying to establish a clear style and consistent look. I view these images the same way possibly a musician views like an EP before they make a, you know, full album. Just a lot of experimentation, you know, maybe a through line with some level of success. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think I've kind of found my way forward in terms of style, message, and look. And I'm excited to see where that road goes. Hopefully not slammed into a wall like some wily coyote gag, but more like hopefully it leads me back here someday. I mean, it literally does for now. Like I said, kind of vaguely, I'll be back for the closing of the gallery on December 6th if you want to try and catch me, but good luck with that. I will likely be covered in butter, so it won't be easy. Anyway, thanks to Leica, Fuji, Adidas, the analog store, etc., for putting up with me and my stupid California slang, but now that I've introduced you all to the important ones like Slammer, Hello Lit, and Ghost Ride the Whip, I fully expect there to be no language barrier between us whatsoever anymore.